Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Zombie Tsunami by Lucky Duck Games. It's for three to six players, takes about, what, a 30 minutes to play, 14 and up in the game. In the game Zombie Tsunami, you're going to be basically moving across a highway with your zombies, avoiding obstacles, and trying to make your opponents lose their zombies. You want to have the most zombies at the end of the game. Eating civilians will actually turn them into zombies at the end of the round, but civilians are easily destroyed. You're also going to be getting some other additional expansion content like zombie birds which you can throw different things that your opponents steal from them with their birds and then of course buying from the shop it's a really weird bizarre style theme i can't really explain you're just moving around uh, as a zombie doing this jumping around and <laughs> eating things there's a mobile game app that actually explains how the game kind of works and the theme of the game so you want to check that out yeah. but otherwise we're going to get into the game i'll show you the components of it and how to play zombie tsunami down below here we have zombie tsunami and all the components let's go ahead and go through all of them i've already went Hence up the game though. So we have Zombie Tsunami and the box, of course, along with the rule book. And it's going to come with a bunch of additional cards that are all in different languages. Uh, just choose the rule book of language uh, for the language that works for you and set the rest aside. This is the rule book for us, English, as well as our card insert, which is going to tell us what uh, is messed up in the game. There's a couple little things you need to switch out. You remove a couple cards that aren't needed and add the cards that should be added to the game. Zombies make mistakes sometimes. So moving on. Okay, so this is the game. Here's everything that comes with over here. Here. We've got the characters you'll be using of the secret roles. You're gonna based on the number of players, you're gonna take out certain ones and just use certain other ones. So we'll just move these ones aside. These ones will be for the players. You're gonna go ahead and take these, shuffle them up, give each player a secret identity at the beginning of the game, uh, to which case they're going to be using that. If you look over here, it'll tell you their rewards and their goals and when you're going to be using them. If you get bombed, you get to do this reward. If you bomb a uh, civilian or civilian successfully, you'll gain this reward. And if you own the most at the end of the round you're going to get this reward so this is one you'd save for the end and these other two you could use instantaneously when the effect requires it setting these aside you're also going to get the zom bird cards and you're going to take these zom berg shopping cards and putting them put them into the shopping deck and you, know, you don't have to play with zom birds if you don't want to uh, and you don't have to play with these event cards either these two things here the two shop the three shopping cards and then putting those cards you don't have to do that but it suggests it because it gives the game a little more depth and it's not that much more complicated so after you went and shuffle the shop cards in you would deal out cards from the deck onto the playing field it'd be number of players plus three including these two cards that are going to be static they'll always stay there and will never get trashed and of course there's the cost of the top left hand corner and what they do is basically the symbols that they represent you've got zombies here you're going to give every player two zombies and then you've got bidding tokens everybody's going to get one of the three different types they'll be used during the game during certain rounds uh, to determine what team you're going to be on like i said this is a three to six player game so at any point in time if you want you will um, be able to choose one of these guys here based on the cards drawn from the round and then of course you'll get to use them i'll explain that in a little bit though so we've got civilians over here and z coins over here the rest of the zombergs and then the event deck is over here so this card here is actually separate it'll stay at the next for the next round when we shuffle them all up so the event card over here uh if you want to use these guys you can simply flip it over it'll tell you if it's something that happens immediately or something that happens at the end of the round and if it happens immediately like this one here it'll sell say if you trade a zombie to another player you're going to be able to get another zombird card uh there is the immediate ones and then of course there are the longer ones that end at the end of the round which are these guys here if you get bombed if you do this if you save the zombie etc etc uh, that is how you're going to be getting zombie bird cards throughout the game along with the three cards you can get from the shop when you purchase items uh, you're also going to need to set this round deck round to, to one two and three there's gonna be six cards in each uh, deck and it'll be explaining the rules how you do that but uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have them correctly done because each round is only going to have six cards after you do that you're going to shuffle all three of the decks put them on top of each other like this and place it over here and then you're pretty much ready to go oh uh, you have your extra zombie pool right here and then these little brain tokens are actually used in the event of a tie you're always going to shuffle them up randomly and place them down on the board in case a tie affects the game because generally whoever has the most zombies will be doing the, their things first however if it's a tie you're going to take these two brains flip them over one player flip this one one player flip this one and the person who wins is going to get to go first all right so to begin the round it's pretty simple you're going to get two zombies like I've already given out and then you're going to flip a round card now the round is gone up there it says okay you need to have uh, you, in order to jump this you're going to suffer you have to roll your zombies and you can lose up to two so if you have these two zombies you're going to roll them if you land on the face value they're going to get them removed so luckily there's only one out of six chances of that happening so he would keep his zombies next player would roll he would get to keep his and this player would get to keep his and the round will continue to the next one we're going to flip this one over okay you can lose up to one zombie here 
Now you roll, nothing happens. You roll this one over here, each player is doing their thing. And okay, good, nothing happened, that's awesome. So now everybody's gonna get a Z coin, which is basically like currency in the game. You can go ahead and use these to buy different items up here, or you can choose not to. This represents the shop phase, and these are the different types of things you can do. So this one here is a bomb. It'll destroy all player civilians as a super bomb. You got things that will save your zombies from death. This will give you an extra zombie. This will give you three civilians. And then of course you're buying a bomb or a civilian, and then the cost is up here. You could choose to buy or you can choose to pass. It'll be up to you. So this player over here, he might want to spend his Z coin, and he can take this card here. Now of course when it's a tie, right, you're going to have to flip these guys over and see who is the person who gets to go first. So in this instance, okay, it would be this guy over here. And they would go that way. But you can, they can just buy their items. So you get the idea, though. Once you buy their items at the end of the shop phase, you're going to re... Um, re-put them all out again, and you'll continue the game flipping over an, oops, not this, that is a shop card, flipping over another round one card, rolling the dice once again, another card here. And um, this one's interesting because this is the team one. You need to have four zombies. Now, in order to have four zombies, these guys are going to have to team up, and they can talk to each other or lie or, can he, or you know, deceive each other, but in the end, the end result is pretty simple. They're going to take one of these three tokens, they're going to choose one secretly, so this guy's chosen this one, and depending on how they want to do it, maybe they're going to team up together, maybe they won't, and, um, yeah, that's okay, I dropped that one. Um, and then they're going to go ahead and reveal their results. So this player says, okay, I reveal this, I reveal this, I reveal this. In this case, these two are going to go. They both have enough to equal four zombies. This one doesn't, so he would suffer a penalty of zombies. So he'd lose zombies for that. And the game's going to continue to the end of the round, in which case, after the final round card has been revealed, oh, another team battle there, uh, another shopping area here, you get a free zombie here. And then this one says you can choose a zombie or a Z coin. After that, uh, provided they didn't play any of their bomb cards, because remember, you can play. they could play these guys here. That will give them an extra zombie at the end of the game. That's going to save them from losing two zombies and this player gets a zombie at the end of the game as well. Uh, they could have at any point in time throughout the game done any of these things successfully to gain zombies, but the game will then once again rinse and re repeat, uh, getting rid of all of these round cards, reshuffling these guys here. You can only have two Z coins at any point in time, and then uh, dealing these hidden identities or hidden pieces up once again. They might have kept these or not, who knows. Uh, and then after that, once again, the, round, the round's going to continue. And it's going to get more and more difficult. Here's an eight requirement, right? Sometimes you want to work together as a full team to do it. And yeah, so that's the basic idea, though, right? Makes sense. Pretty simple as far as the game goes. Make sure you remember to always uh, settle ties with the brains. But when you're buying over here, these ones are never going to get removed. And every beginning of every round, you're going to flip one of these guys to see what happens at the end of the round. If you didn't use a red, uh, one of these red markers over here, if you didn't use one of these guys, you don't get this. But if you did, you're going to receive that. So that's how it kind of works. Anyway, that's the idea of Zombie Tsunami. Let's come up and talk about it. Zombie Tsunami is a family game, and it's also a party game. Lucky Duck Games does a lot of games that involve apps, so they're going to be coming out with another one that's called um, Jetpack Joyride, and they've done stuff like Fruit Ninja. So this is something that's pretty common for them as far as the, the app meets board games category. Now, does it live up to the app? Well, I took a little bit of time to play the app, and it does. It makes sense. You're literally running across the field, jumping over, eating different things. You'll, you'll see it. I'll be posting it up so you guys can see what it looks like but the theme comes out in the game like most of their app uh, to board game transitions the theme really does work as far as how much or little the theme is in, a, in, a, in an app game that's up for you to decide uh, the game itself is an interesting party game because you are working together and you are working separately you want to have the most zombies you want to be the most successful at the end of the game but in some cases you have to function together as a group and you can also choose to be conniving and evil this game has some really nasty um uh take that aspect to it like oh let's all be on a team and then you know you secretly whisper to the other friend like oh you know what let's actually not be on a team with this guy and so you both pick yellow and this guy picks red and he is undoubtedly in trouble or maybe you're the only person who has a uh, 10 and everybody else only has one zombie somehow <laughs> well you can go ahead and try to make sure you pick the only color no one chose so even if they teamed up it wouldn't make a difference the bird cards add a little extra to the game i think they definitely should be included the dice are usually not going to roll zombie side up because it's one and six. However, when it does, it's very devastating, which is super funny with people that like roll two sixes. And so the one time in a game where you don't want to roll sixes constantly, the nice added hidden roll aspect that changes throughout the game is cool. Trying to give you more motivation to do certain things. And then with this little bird, the bird event cards basically give you even more motivation to do things differently. So sometimes it'll motivate you to help people. Sometimes it'll motivate you to hurt people. So it, as a player in a game, you're 
you're specifically going to want to do certain things as you know an individual like i don't like to do this to certain players or i like to really get them well this card now says you have to help people or this card says you now have to blow everybody up so it does change the way you think as a game which is an interesting mechanic i like that aspect in a game a lot of other games do it differently but i haven't seen it done in a party game um, the shopping is fine. It works very well. It's a nice additive as well as the fact that you can pick up civilians However, if you ever get bombed and you have a bunch of civilians, they're all dead But if you can manage to savor them and keep them alive to the end of the round You're gonna get a bunch of zombies for doing so. So that's super cool um, It gives you a lot of components in the game. So it's like uh, I don't even know like, like a bunch of extra you know, languages and cards, a bunch of extra rule books It was really frustrating for me to go through it all and figure out what it would all like. What is all this stuff? But after it was all said and done, I separated them and I removed all the cards that I didn't need. It wasn't so bad, um, but I guess that can kind of irritate certain people. Um, otherwise, though, the game is, is fun. If you don't mind a little bit of a take that aspect, if you like the goofy zombie aspect, it's not like... It's definitely safe for kids and family. Zombies are are just the the, the brunt of the joke, right? The only, the only like little aspect that is even involved with zombies is you can, like bomb the humans i guess they don't even really eat humans so i don't know overall it's fun i really enjoy this game it's a game i'll bring out for parties it's a game i'll bring out for when my little my, my nephews and nieces are around and of course my sister and um anyway it's just like people that are like just not super strategic but like a little bit of take that like a little bit of party and definitely a little bit of strategy in it um uh, the artwork is phenomenal i really enjoy that aspect of the game i think most people who um have gotten a taste of it so far will know whether or not they want to pick up this game zombie tsunami personally i did enjoy it i do recommend it it'll be up to you though to decide whether or not you want to pick up zombie tsunami by lucky duck games all right i'll see you later